hello. Thank you so much for watching uh, today's video. I'm excited to go over this topic with you. So today, today's going to be all about hemo versus peritoneal dialysis. All right. So uh, if you want to learn more about the difference between the two, then make sure that you don't go anywhere and watch this video from the very beginning to the end. All right. Okay. So let's go over hemo versus peritoneal dialysis and let's just kind of break, break down pretty quickly what's the difference and how it does it work. Um, if you haven't already, you can take advantage of our free report, which is our top 10 mistakes that you must avoid guide. So you can download it right now, go ahead and grab your cell phone and just put the camera over the QR code on the screen and you'll get access to that free report right away. You can also um, simply, if you're watching this live, you can also go back and scroll back and watch this again and be able to download it then. Okay. All right. So let's go over today's topic and let's talk about hemo versus peritoneal dialysis. And if you didn't watch the previous video where I talk about kidney disease, um, what is kidney disease or understanding kidney disease period, please go back and watch that video because it's going to really give a lot of context um, as well. So let's kind of go into it, hemo versus peritoneal dialysis, right? So first and foremost, we have, um, let's talk about what is hemodialysis and then also peritoneal dialysis. And then let me do a quick recap on what is dialysis period. So dialysis is essentially um, a method that we do in order to help filter or get rid of waste or and pretty much honestly replace the function of the kidneys. So in the event that we have a patient who does not have adequate kidney function, we will do dialysis in order to um, replace what the kidneys are supposed to do. Um, so that's why it's important that you understand what the kidneys do in, in, in the first place so you understand the implications of what dialysis means before and after. So first and foremost, um, like I was saying is that, I'm sorry, like I was saying is that dialysis is done to help primarily to filter and get rid of waste, um, to help bring electrolyte balance and also blood pressure control, which are all of the functions that the kidneys does. But it's really mainly on, so we really want to just get rid of all the excess fluid in the patient's body, which has those type of um, outcomes. So the one that you're going to see most commonly, though, is hemodialysis, right? Hemodialysis is the one you're going to see more than often. And when I say more than often, I mean um, in the clinical setting, that's the one that is usually most commonly done. And there's a, some different reasons why, you know, it's, it is up to the patient um, as far as like why they would do one over the other, which I'll talk about in a minute. But let's just talk about what they are first. So with hemodialysis, the patient will typically have a uh, what you call a fistula. And the fistula, AV is just another, this word AV fistula is the location of the fistula. Um, so it's, it can be located, usually they can have it in their, this area right here on the, either the right or the left of, of their upper chest area, or they may have one on their arm as well. That's another location that's also very common. And essentially what you are doing when you're the nurse and you go in to check the patient before they have the dialysis, um, you're going to assess first the the, cat, the site. You're not going to take off the bandage, but you're really honestly just looking at the site to make sure that it is clean and dry and intact. There's no bleeding, right? And if it's visible, there's no signs of redness or infection. And then in addition to that, you're also going to grab your stethoscope, you're going to flip the bell over, and you're going to listen for any type of um, bruise, right? You're going to hear um, thrushing sound. 
but you're, you're really just making sure that it's intact. And then when they have dialysis done, they're going to have it done three times a week. So with hemodialysis, this procedure is done by a professional. So typically a hemodialysis nurse that will do the procedure. All right. With the help of others as well. So, um, but it's done by a trained professional. Okay. And it's done three times per week. Okay. And so when it's being done, it usually lasts for about three to four hours. All right. Um, it, and it, sometimes it depends on the patient, but usually that's how long it lasts. Who, what, what can you tell me in fact, comment below, if you know, what is, what it, what's a really important nursing precaution that you need to consider before they have dialysis, right? Before they have dialysis or even when you are starting your day with the patient, what do you think that is? Okay, so it's going to be holding, monitoring their blood pressure, right? But then in addition to monitoring their blood pressure, I should be more specific, monitor their blood pressure prior to it being done. That's very important. And then if they have blood pressure medications, which they usually are, to making sure that you hold it or you don't give it. So um, unless the blood pressure is like insanely high, like greater than 200, typically, or greater than 180, I should say, uh, systolic, we want to hold the blood pressure medications the doctor will give you should give you parameters. So if if BP is less than this, then do this, you know. But um, you want to hold the blood pressure medications if they're having dialysis the same day. So then they're going to have the dialysis. The, the dialysis nurse is going to show up if this is in the hospital setting. If it's in a clinic, then it's different. And they're going to do this procedure for three to four hours, and they're going to use a artificial mach machine. So that's one thing as well, is that they actually use a artificial mas machine to dialyze the patient. And what they're really doing is that they're essentially just filtering the blood in the patient, getting rid of all those excess particles, excess toxins, everything that they don't, the body does not need, and then putting their blood back into the patient. So that's hemodialysis. Peritoneal dialysis is different. So a peritoneal dialysis, there's no um, dialysis machine. And um, instead, they use the abdominal lining of the patient to filter their blood. So there's like a, um, they in, with this one, they use like a dialysate um, and they use the abdominal lining in the patient's abdomen and that helps to filter the, filter the, the blood and oftentimes it's like a bag and the bag has to be changed uh, several times a day if it's continuous. So if it's continuous or if it's automated, so meaning that they, that it runs only at night. So the difference with, with the peritoneal dialysis is typically it's ongoing. So it's all the time, um, you know, and versus the hemodialysis is three times a week. The other thing about peritoneal dialysis versus hemo, <clears throat> excuse me, is that um, the patient needs to be educated and know how to do it themselves, right? So typically, like, if because it's, it's going to be a, a permanent solution as well, the patient needs to know what they're doing to be able to do this themselves at home to themselves. Unless they, unless they can rely on a family member to get it done, this is why it's typically more often that it's going to be done, the hemo is going to be done over the peritoneal. So because if you have a patient, let's say, that's confused or they're just very lethargic all the time, they're very tired, then it, it's not going to be the best choice to put them on peritoneal dialysis because the patient needs to be patient educated and know how to change the bag, understand what they're doing, etc. cetera. Um, and like I said, this one is filtered. It's, it's a filter that's through the abdomen lining instead versus a fistula that's outside of the patient's um, body. And, um, oh, not outside the body, but versus like a fistula, it's two different things though. So with the peritoneal dialysis, like I was saying though, it's, it's continuous, it's ongoing, or it's done at night. 
versus the hemodialysis, it's three to four hours, three times a week. So um, like I said, you're more likely to see the hemo versus the peritoneal. That's the one that's probably gonna be most common. But those are just some of the things you need to remember. Um, you still have to monitor the same things as if you, as, as far as the kidney function, the cranial levels. So they still have the same signs and symptoms. Um, but it's different though, in the sense that hemo is three times a week. Peritoneal is, is usually ongoing. Hemo uh, is done by a trained professional. Peritoneal can be done by the patient and is done, only, is done primarily by the patient. The patient needs to know how to do the procedure and do it well on their own. Uh, unless they have a really, really reliable family member, but you have to remember that this, this needs to be changed rather frequently. So that's why it's more ideal to have the hemo. Um, hemodialysis requires a, a machine, right? So they have that big artificial machine to come and filter. Peritoneal dialysis does not. They just literally just use a filter and it, um, they use the abdominal lining of the patient to filter the blood. So no machine. All right, and um, let's see what else I put. Um, that's pretty much it, right? And so like I said, oh, and then peritoneal is continuous, hemo is three times a week. So that's it, pretty much it in summary as far as the difference between hemo versus peritoneal dialysis, okay? If you found this helpful, please go ahead and um, like, subscribe below, comment below, and just say, yes, this was helpful. Yes, I learned something new. Um, and share the broadcast too. We definitely appreciate it if you share it below. And you can take advantage of our training, so um, our program. So if you're trying to pass your NCLEX exam, go ahead and go to this um, button right here. You can go ahead and take advantage of our assessment program, which is a program where I, essentially we go over you get access to um, assessment tests, R and LPN exam, which will help you to identify uh, how ready you are to take the test, what you need to do, how you need to study differently. It will, you'll get a PDF download to help you to identify what you should review based on your weaknesses. You'll also receive an assessment test. Um, I'm sorry, additional assessment exams, you'll, uh, or sorry, or practice questions. You also get trainings on, on pharmacology, management care, and then you'll also get a, a bonus body system crash course review, all of this for three months access. So go to the link, or sorry, go to the um, QR code, scan it right now on your cell phone, and enter the code ASSESS now to get 20% off before it is expired, all right? And last but not least as well, if you are taking, um, if you are taking your LPN exam, um, you can join our wait list right now for our upcoming LPN review by going to bit.ly slash LPN wait list. All right. All right. bit.ly slash LPN wait list. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you found it informative, helpful. I hope you learned something new that you didn't know before. And I'll see you in the next video.